I think it should matter to the U United States Navy because it's the law, it's a UN um, Security Council resolution, but most importantly, because it's important to our national security. There's been plenty of research to show that having um, more women and diversity of views helps our peace process. It helps consider elements of the war that we need for a lasting peace and security. So I think for that perspective, and um, really for that we have the force we need for the future. As um, more issues attracting folks into the military and retaining them, we need to go for everybody. And women are actually probably about 50% 50, 50 or so, but there are 60% of the folks getting our college degrees and our graduate degrees. So it is critical that we're getting the best minds to protect our nation and work on our national security. So this is really a, a difference between when we call, talk about DEI, diversity, equity, and inclusion, vice women, peace, and security. So women, peace, and security, we're talking about having where women can actually be decision makers or have access to the decision makers. DEI just looks at the number, saying, okay, we have enough females in the force, but that if they're not actually where they can impact the decision makers or are the decision makers, then there won't be change. And if we don't have a good grouping of them. If you just have one or two as your decision makers or with access, it still won't impact change. Studies have shown it takes about 20 to 30 percent to have um, really a quorum and make an impact and change. Well, I think it's important that we do implement it in um, joint professional military education because DOD is directed that we will include the WPS framework in what we do. And if we don't teach our officers and our senior enlisted on how to use it or what it is, a lot of my fellow faculty don't even understand what it really is. So getting that understanding and then implementing the law, JPME is one of the best ways to be able to do that. Why is it hard to implement? I think a lot of things is fear, and really a lot of things in the military come down to rice bowls. But, you know, people see things as a zero-sum game, and oh, if we're going to let more females into leadership, or if we're going to take that perspective, well, what happens to what I do, or what's important, or we got to take away books written by males, or they see it as a zero-sum game, and fear of what it means to them, the future. And also, we still have a lot in our culture that sees security as a male-dominated area. Well, I think you see it in several different areas. So we have the males that are supporting us at home. Mm -hmm. Males really, a lot of things, um, taking care of the house and children still primarily falls on females. So we need males to step up and carry the burden at home. A lot of us who are senior female officers, we have a very strong supportive husband at home or I guess same gender spouse, but we have somebody there who's supporting us and encouraging us. And then in the workplace. so. Our peers can make sure women come and take a seat at the table. Often studies will show women will sit against a wall so they can encourage folks. Um, there's another thing called amplification. So often when a woman states something, it gets dismissed until a male says it. Well, a male can say, as Captain Higson said, and encourage folks to realize who, was, who it actually should be attributed to. And just educating themselves and becoming more knowledgeable about the, about the issue.